Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, we will be testing the R3 2200G performance in 20 games. Let's see how this budget AMD Ryzen APU release in 2018 performs now in early 2022. Is it still capable enough to play some games? We'll find out together. The Ryzen 3 2200G is an APU released by AMD in early 2018. This was the first ever Ryzen desktop APU together with the R5 2400G. It uses the same 14 nanometer instead of the 12 nanometer that the other non-APU 2000 series processor from AMD. This processor has 4 cores without SMT, so it only has 4 threads total. They run at a base clock of 3.5 GHz and can boost up to 3.7 GHz. It also packs 4 MB of L3 cache. For the integrated GPU, it has the Radeon Vega 8 graphics. As stated in the name, it has 8 Vega cores that runs at 1100 MHz. When this was first released, this APU was pretty good. With an MSRP of $100, the integrated graphics is competitive against the discrete GT1030 from NVIDIA, the GDDR5 version that is. It sometimes comes close to the performance of this discrete GPU, and often, this APU is a smarter choice instead of a really cheap CPU plus GT1030 combo. Since with the R3 2200G, you're getting a better CPU most of the time. This of course if you're considering buying everything brand new back in the day. This little APU is perfect for a small portable entry-level gaming PC. It only consumes 65 watts of power so it's really easy to cool. And thankfully, AMD has included a cooler in the box and it's the rate style, which was quite adequate to cool this GPU. So if you were looking for a small portable system or maybe a small secondary computer, you could use this APU and be good to go. In fact, this is the APU that my uncle chose in his ASRock Desk Mini A300. If you want to check it out, link down in the description. Though, it being an APU, it requires fast memory. The faster the memory is, the better the integrated graphics performance get. Though, you can only get too far with memory speeds with Ryzen 2000. Don't expect to run 4000 MHz RAM with this APU. Expect something like 3000 to 3200 MHz. All that being said, here's the complete spec of this APU and the driver version in which the games are tested. And here is the test system we'll be running it on. I recorded the average FPS of 3 multiplayer games for the multiplayer games, and for the single player, I used the in-game benchmark if it was available, and ran it 3 times and took the average. And if it doesn't have them, I played the mission and repeated it 3 times and took the average FPS. For the settings, I changed it and put what I deem fit for the R3 2200G. You'll see the settings used at the start of each game. Also, sorry for the quality of the background gameplay. For some reason, Radeon didn't have the record feature with this APU, so I wasn't able to capture the gameplay in this way. I recorded all the games with my phone. All the future benchmark will be recorded via software if it's available. All that being said, here are the results. Enjoy! The R3 2200G runs Valorant really well at low settings. With an average FPS of 108 and 1% loss of 44, it's pretty playable with these kinds of frames. This is good enough for casual Valorant gameplay. Though, if you're a serious competitive gamer, anything less than 144 FPS is unplayable, but for anybody else, this is pretty good performance for an APU. Call of Duty Warzone on the other hand was not a fluid experience. It depends on each person if these frames are playable. With an average FPS of 44 and 1% loss of 16, you can certainly play it, but is it a good experience? Personally, no. Anything below 60 FPS is hard for me to play, and 1% low below 30 is not that good. Though, for others, this FPS could be good enough. 
lowering the quality to 720p gives a tiny boost in performance with a surprise of visual clarity. Call of Duty Vanguard experience is pretty similar to Warzone. For the 3fps average and 1% loss of 18, I have the same opinion, though this is a tiny bit better game to run compared to Warzone because Warzone has a huge map and a larger player full size. It can definitely lower the average FPS more during intense fights with lots of enemies. Meanwhile, Vanguard has a smaller maps and also the help of FSR to boost its frames. Fortnite on low settings runs close to 60fps average, 56 to be exact. Though the 1% loss is still not great, only 12, that's quite stutter experience. I recommend running the game at performance mode to achieve better, more fluid gameplay with the suck race of visual clarity. Though it isn't as bad as Warzone and it's still playable for casual players, but as I said, if you're into competitive, just run the performance mode. Doom Eternal surprisingly runs pretty good with the RT 2200G. Although it's running at 720p quality and low preset, the visual at these settings was still good in my opinion. This just shows how well optimized this game is and how beautiful it is. The average is 52fps and 1% loss of 32. This is good performance for an APU. I'm quite satisfied with it. League of Legends, a game that is more R3 2200G's caliber. At 1080p at very high settings, this APU is capable of delivering 128fps average and 71% lows. So if you're a League of Legends player, the R3 2200G will deliver highly playable performance even at high settings. You can run even higher refresh rate panel in this game with this APU. Halo Infinite, the newest Halo title that has been released so far. Unfortunately, this game is a tad bit hard to run for the R3 2200G. With an average FPS of 35 and 1% low of 15, the gameplay was bad. It's hard to play the game and actually be good at it. But if you're a casual player and just want to hop in a game and play for fun, I guess this FPS is enough. At least it runs. Another game that the R3 2200G is capable of running well, Rocket League. This game is pretty well optimized and easy to run. So, unsurprisingly, the R3 2200G is capable of delivering 52 FPS average and 1% loss of 32 at high quality at 1080p. If you want more frames, just dial down the settings and the R3 2200G will deliver. This APO performance is good, unlike my skill in this game. I'm more of a liability and it's actually better if I stay still. Of course, we can't leave this legendary game out. GTA 5. This game at normal setting runs fine. 38 FPS average and 1% loss of 25, it's playable enough. It reminds me of PS3 performance experience. So if that's good enough for you, then the R3 2200G gets the job done. You can definitely finish the game with this APU without any issues. Another pretty well optimized game, Overwatch. We're running it at 1080p at low quality preset. The R3 2200G and its Vega graphics is capable of delivering 71 FPS average and 1% loss of 54. That's pretty fluid experience and highly playable, I can't complain. If you want more FPS, you can lower the resolution, but for me, this balance of FPS and graphics clarity is fine, though it's not high enough to run high refresh rate monitors, you'll need a better GPU for that. Forza Horizon 5 is the latest installment of this series, and it's really sensitive with VRAM. 
the R3 2200G was able to get 38 FPS average, which in its own was alright and good enough for a racing game, but it's the 1% lows and the stutter. Only having 9 FPS for 1% low is extremely annoying. With the stutters, it makes the game unplayable unfortunately. Lowering the quality to 720p didn't improve the stutters either. I think the 2GB of VRAM allocated is just not enough and having DDR4 as its VRAM just doesn't help since it's way slower compared to GDDR5. The R3 2200G performs great with the Rainbow Six Siege. With an average FPS of 73 and 1% boost of 55, it's pretty similar experience in terms of FPS like Overwatch. It's good enough fluid experience. For casual players, it's perfectly enough. But just like Overwatch, if you want more FPS, you can lower the resolution scale, sacrificing visuals, but for me, I'd keep it this way. If you like driving games and the performance in Forza Horizon 5 disappoint you, no need to worry, the RT 2200G's performance in Dirt 5 is acceptable, unlike the unplayable of Forza Horizon 5, though we're running at 720p compared to the 1080p of Forza. We are getting a more fluid experience in the other hand though. An average FPS of 42 and 1% loss of 36, I'm pretty satisfied with this performance of this little APU. Another classic, CSGO, how can we not have it in our benchmarks? Anyways, the performance in this game is similar to Valorant, an average FPS of 116 and 1% loss of 51. It was a great experience. I deem 90 FPS to be the minimum to be competitive in a game, and the RT 200G delivers even higher FPS than that. It can saturate a 144Hz monitor, but it's still high enough to see the difference compared to 60Hz. Shadow of the Benchmarks, as Steve from Hardware and Box once said. Thanks to Epic Games for making this game free. I know there was a free demo, but I just realized it when it was already free. Anyways, the performance of this APU is almost playable. 27 FPS average and 1% plus of 23, it just barely hit that magic 30 FPS last gen console like experience. You might want to lower the resolution to 720p to achieve that. Personally, I can't play with this FPS, but I'm spoiled by higher FPS, but for others, your playability requirements might differ compared to mine. War Thunder, on the other hand, run well. An average FPS of 45 and 1% loss of 29, I believe it's good enough for this specific game, since vehicles doesn't move fast unlike fast rate shooters. You can also make use of the ultra low quality preset that will boost the performance, a lot similar to Fortnite performance mode. Sacrificing visuals, but that's your shot to take if you wanna enable it. I'm really impressed with the performance of this APU in Red Dead Redemption. This game is really hard to run even for some discrete GPUs, but this little APU did it. It's with the lowest possible settings and 720p, but it ran, and with playable frame rate I must say. With an average FPS of 36 and 1% plus of 17, it's pretty impressive for an APU from 2018. It's not always butterflies and sunshine unfortunately, and running this game on an APU is almost a crime. A game where even some discrete GPUs can be brought down to their knees. The mighty RT 2200G was able to run, poorly, but it did run, with an average FPS of 21 and 1% loss of 7. Yes, 7. You can count those frames with your fingers. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the latest patch that adds FSR with Cyberpunk because it was released days later and I no longer had the 2200G, but I do expect it to make the game at least somewhat playable, but don't expect a way better experience. Good thing that Battlefield 2042 suck, because I don't have that game. Just kidding, just kidding guys. 
I'm as disappointed as much as you guys. Battlefield is my favorite shooter game, and what they did with Battlefield is just... I have no words. Anyways, the R3 2200G performance is mediocre. An average FPS of 32 and 1% loss of 20. Can you play it? Probably. Can you be competitive with it? I doubt it. But I'd like you to prove me wrong. Just like other games, feel free to lower the quality to achieve higher FPS. And finally, phew, the last game we're going to look at, Battlefield 4. Another classic. It's what the Battlefield 2042 should have been. This game is pretty old now, and unsurprisingly, it runs decently with the R3 2200G. At medium settings, at 1080p, this game runs with 47fps average and 1% loss of 35. You can be flexible with the settings and achieve 60fps. This APU is good enough to run this game. And that's all 20 games. If you made it this far, you're amazing. You must love watching gaming benchmarks, so you better subscribe to not miss upcoming benchmark videos. <laughs> the RT 2200G performance is pretty surprising. I was sure that Red Dead Redemption wouldn't even load, but this mighty APU made it work. Though, some games like Forza Horizon 5, the stutter just made the game unplayable, but with all the 20 games I've benchmarked, most of them were playable, averaging more than 30 FPS at both 720 and 1080p resolution at low settings, depending on the game. It's up to you if it's playable or not. For some esports games like Valorant, CSGO, or League of Legends, the R3 2200G was able to have more than 90 FPS average, and I believe that's good enough to be competitive in these games. So, is it worth buying now in 2022? It really depends on the price. There's also the R3 3200G, which is basically a Zen Plus version of this APU. Instead of the 14nm, it uses the 12nm, just like the non Ryzen 2000 APU series. Unfortunately, it's not 7nm unlike the normal Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So it's pretty much just an overclock RT 3200G, both the CPU and iGPU. If you can find this APU for less than $100 or $80, it's still pretty capable APU. AMD has released R5-5600G and R7-5700G, but they are really on another price category. They are more powerful but yeah, they are more expensive. These tiny low power APUs still got their uses for tiny PCs or temporary system, especially now with a crazy GPU market where everything is just so expensive. Thanks for watching the video everybody, I would appreciate your support so if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. Subscribe to not miss upcoming tech videos. Leave a comment because it helps with the algorithm, just if you want to. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. Share this video if you think someone you know would want to see it. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Bye.